If you're in the market for a new SUV, well, you're pretty much spoilt for choice. But what if you also need that SUV to be four wheel drive capable? Well, then it becomes a little bit more of a narrower search. But regardless of whether you need a car to be four wheel drive or not, the Suzuki S-Cross offers seriously impressive value for money within this segment. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I think it's the unsung hero of the SUV world. So if that sounds good, then please do keep watching. And if you like new car reviews from Suzuki, Honda, Hyundai, Mazda, Renault and Alpine and Dacia, then this is the place to be. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and join along with the John Banks Review channel. Okay, so let's start by talking about design because let's face it, design is a very subjective thing. There is a ton of SUVs to choose from out there in all different shapes and sizes. But if you want something which is very practical, functional and well equipped, and I don't think it gets much better than the Suzuki S-Cross. It's not too flashy, but it also in this top spec ultra trim looks very, very sharp. You've got the new gloss black Suzuki front grille at the front there, and you've got this silver bar which runs all the way across from the Suzuki badge inside the front lights, which I really love you get two different types of alloy wheel options. You've got a slightly more simple design on the lower spec motion car, and then you have this two-tone design on the Ultra. Now, one thing to know about the Suzuki S-Cross is they like to keep the specifications very, very simple. There is just two versions of the Suzuki S-Cross, the Motion and this car, the Ultra. And I'm gonna explain what you get with each car, but in general, both are very well specified and both look pretty smart. You'd find it hard to tell the difference across from each of the models by looking at them side by side. Another way to tell that this is the top spec model is you also have a panoramic sunroof, which is a lovely extra to have. The S-Cross features some great symmetry. So like at the front of the car, you've got these clear lights, which have the chrome bar, which almost float inside, connecting to the rear bar at the back and the center Suzuki badge. You've also got a plastic bumper at the bottom, which is really great for if you get in any little small car park dings or knocks, you're not gonna damage your paintwork. The boot is really practical as well because it has a completely flat load bay and it's nice and low. So that means if you wanna get things like push chairs inside there, it's really, really easy. And once inside, you get a really good level of boot space as well. This mild hybrid features 430 litres, including an adjustable boot floor. However, you do need to be aware that if you do go for the strong hybrid, this will be reduced to 293 miles due to the batteries. The Suzuki S-Cross sits above the Vitara in the Suzuki SUV range as their largest model, and space in the back is really practical. I've got loads of legroom, although headroom is a little bit tight with this panoramic roof though having that panoramic roof is lovely as it brings loads of light into the rear. Seating for two people is more than adequate, but the third may be a little bit of a squeeze because this middle seat is a little bit narrow and you do have a transmission tunnel, so legroom isn't exactly the best. You do have lots of practical extras like a pull-out armrest with a couple of cup holders, nice large door cars which will hold a large bottle of water. I've got electric windows in the back here, but the main thing that it misses out on, opposed to more premium expensive rivals, is USB slots. The main differences to the interior of the Motion and the Ultra cars are the fabric that it's trimmed in. This top spec Ultra model is finished with contrasting leather and cloth details. You also get a lovely leather wrapped dashboard as well. It feels nice and high quality. That's not to say that the entry level car feels subpar quality, but it's just a little bit more special in here and I really think it's worth upgrading. Of course, it's also worth upgrading for all the extra kit that you get. Now, all of the Suzuki S-Crosses come really well specified as standard, including 
adaptive cruise control, heated and folded door mirrors, Bluetooth, safety systems such as lane assist, anti-collision warning, parking sensors, keyless start, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and dual zone climate control. But when you go for the top spec ultra above and beyond all of that kit, you also get the pan roof, which I've mentioned a few times. You also get keyless entry and start, including a panoramic 360 degree parking camera, which when you first start the car, you get a lovely graphic of the screen of that 360 degree parking camera. It's something very small, but it does make the car feel a little bit more premium compared to the entry level model. Fit and finish is very, very good. You've got a lever wrapped armrest in the center, a couple of cup holders, and you've also got a nice center console, which feels really solid. The steering wheel is really practical and easy to use, and that's definitely a familiar theme within the Suzuki S-Cross and actually across the whole Suzuki range. Nothing's too complicated to use. You've got lovely buttons on the steering wheel for controlling your volume. You've also got buttons for controlling your adaptive cruise control as well. Behind the steering wheel, you've of course got your standard stalks that you get for your automatic lights and automatic rain sensing wipers. The climate control is physical dials. It's really easy to use. Same with the heated seats as well down the bottom here. And though you do have a touchscreen which controls a lot of the car's systems, it's really simple and easy to use. Space is also really good. And something I like about Suzuki is they are designed for the right hand drive market like here in the UK. And that means you get a massive glove box. I mean, look at the size of this book pack you get with Suzuki and that all fits in there really, really easily. I could get loads more in there as well. You've got a little bit of storage up front here. You've got a little bit of storage inside the center console. You've got some nice deep door cards and you also got somewhere to pop your sunglasses. For drivers who are upgrading their car for the first time in quite a few years, then the Suzuki S-Cross is actually going to feel more familiar than a lot of its rivals. And that's because it has two things which are actually quite hard to find nowadays. It's got a manual handbrake and a manual gearbox. This once again is definitely something which is a preference, but let me know down below. Do you like manual or automatic handbrakes? The model that I'm driving with this manual gearbox is the mild hybrid, whilst for 2023, Suzuki begin offering a new engine option paired with an automatic gearbox. The S-Cross offers really good value for money when it comes to the standard specification, but actually they want to save you money elsewhere as well. The Suzuki S-Cross is something called a strong hybrid. Now there's a few different meanings for hybrids, but when people say strong hybrid, that means that though it's not a plug-in, so you don't have to plug it in to top up the charge, you can run on electric alone for very short periods of time. This is fantastic for people who don't necessarily want to be plugging their car in, but want to save on their fuel. The S-Cross is just a really nice car to drive. It's nice and smooth. It's not uncomfortable over bumps and the steering is really light and easy to use. However, if you want a car which is sporty and engaging, you do have to be aware that this isn't a sporty car. Even if you pop it in the sport mode, though it has a more responsive engine in this mode, the steering is still quite light. So there's not that much connection to the steering wheel through the road, which for keen drivers may be a little bit of a negative. However, for inner city driving and for people who are darting around town, it's fantastic as it's really easy to manoeuvre. The S-Cross gets a ton of safety equipment as standard, and these include things like anti-collision warning. It also gets lane assist, blind spot sensors, and traffic sign recognition. Opting for the Ultra model will also gain the addition of Suzuki's All Grip, their four wheel drive system. This gives you the confidence to go exploring. For instance, the snow mode will send equal amounts of torque between the front and rear wheels. In lock mode, the traction control system will break the wheels that are maybe spinning. To top off what is already a fantastic value for money car, then you have the reliability that Suzuki offers. 
Suzuki has consistently won awards and led the way when it comes to reliability of their vehicles and also their customer satisfaction. And Suzuki are so confident in the reliability of their cars that they now offer a service activated seven year warranty. So that means on top of the three year warranty you get as standard, you now get an additional, that's me doing maths, five, six, seven, no, four. And four years of service activated warranty that means that if you bring your Suzuki back to a Suzuki service center like we have at John Banks in Bury St Edmunds and Ipswich you get an additional year of warranty which I think is fantastic so there we have it if you're looking for an SUV which ticks all of the boxes then it doesn't get much better than the Suzuki S-Cross Specifically in this trim would be my ideal. The Ultra, you get that four wheel drive, you get the lovely 360 degree parking camera, you get the panoramic sunroof and you get the option of it being four wheel drive capable as well. It just means it's a little bit more practical than the entry level car. I also love that manual gearbox. It's always nice to have an automatic, but manual gearboxes, especially in strong hybrids, are becoming pretty rare nowadays. So to see one in the Suzuki S-Cross is actually a bit of a delight. But let me know, what do you think of the Suzuki S-Cross? Perhaps you've bought one. I want to know, are you enjoying it? Pop it in the comments down below. If you want any more information on the Suzuki S-Cross and the cars that we have in stock or any deals that we currently have on, then make sure you get in touch with John Banks. I'll pop all the details down below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye.